Hi, Alison Mead from Silicon Bullet here with another bookkeeping tips video. Um, been helping some clients recently who have been doing their very first ever VAT returns and they get very worried about the submission of their VAT return. Now the secret if you are using packages like Sage, QuickBooks and Xero is that if you get the data entry correct, the VAT submission is just a case of doing some checks on your data and then hitting a submit button. So when you're doing your own VAT return for the first time, just make sure you get some help with how to enter your invoices, bills, transactions and payments. And, um, and then the VAT return will kind of sort itself out. If you're doing your very first VAT return ever, then you also have the chance to reclaim some VAT on expenses you may have had from before you became VAT registered. So I'd always go and look at the HMRC website in case things have changed since I did this video on what you can claim. But say you've bought any high value capital items, vans, cars, equipment, anything like that, that you paid VAT on, before you registered for VAT, you will be able to then claim all, if not all, a proportion of that VAT back in your first VAT return. And it also, if you've bought any uh, stock and materials, you'll be able to claim back what you haven't used at the time of the VAT registration. Maybe even you've paid a annual rent invoice and you're back registering six months into the contract and you've still got six months to go, then you'd be able to claim back for six months of that as well. It's kind of thinking about what you've spent before you've back registered that you've still got to use in the business after the date of your back registration. That might be something that you need an accountant or someone like me to help you put the entries in so that they appear correctly on your VAT return. But apart from that, everything else can be pretty straightforward just make sure that you put your entries in to the system with the correct VAT code, that you uh, put things that don't have VAT on them correctly and exempt or zero rated and not just willy-nilly use the no VAT code and, uh, and then the VAT return will sort itself out. There are checks that I do before I run the VAT return. So I'm just walking my dog Daisy and we're getting close to the M1. All the traffic's going past, it's getting a bit noisy, so I think I'm gonna call her back and turn around the other way before I continue. Daisy, come on. So, the checks that I make before I run a VAT return, I will always make sure I have done a bank reconciliation up to the date of the end of the VAT period, because that's a really good way of seeing whether you've done the errors of duplication, putting something in twice, omission, missing something out completely, or if you've just keyed something in incorrectly. I will do that for every single bank account, and if I've got a petty cash account, I would have, there's so obviously no bank reconciliation you can do about that because there's no um, statement, but I would visually check that. Also, if I've got any accounts, things like Square or SumUp, uh, PayPal, those kind of things. I would also visually check those codes to make sure that it looks right and that the balance of the end of the period is what I'm expecting it to be. The other place that I would go and look at is my list of outstanding invoices and I would make sure that there's nothing in there that I know has been paid or nothing that might have been put in there twice as well. Um, because sometimes, you know, if somebody might have paid you in cash and not through the bank or something should have been credited and you've forgotten to credit it, then that can make a difference too. So I would review my outstanding invoices. I would also go and review my outstanding bills. Again, checking for duplication, omission, just making sure. Again, when a business is quite starting out, Often items are paid for personally by the director and you can still put those in, mark them as paid to the director's loan account 
so that you know that you can reclaim the money from your business later if the business can't afford to pay for it straight away but you're still perfectly able to reclaim the VAT on those invoices even if the business hasn't paid for it itself directly as long as it's a legitimate business expense so those are the three main areas I would check I would then go and look at my draft VAT return and I would do a visual check and scan through the entries on there just to make sure that I think everything is correct I pay particular attention to any zero rated or exempt sales invoices just to check that they really should have been zero rated or exempt and I will check any larger purchases that I actually do have the VAT receipt and they've been put through with VAT on correctly everyone make mistakes you know HMRC understand mistakes are made but if you make sure that you double check the things so that if you do make a mistake it's in the VAT man's favour rather than your favour then you're not going to get into trouble for underpaying you might temporarily overpay something while you go and check and then you can escort that out on your next VAT return if you are a standard VAT or accrual basically means if you're not sure go to your VAT settings and you will see it will say standard or accrual then you need to also make sure that you have entered any invoices into your system where the invoice date is from your VAT period whether or not it's been paid because the uh, and you also need to make sure you've updated any sales invoices into the system whether or not you've been paid because with accrual or standard VAT the VAT is due based on the date of the document if you are cash accounting that's not quite so important as long as you have reconciled all your bank accounts because with cash accounting you only pay the VAT or reclaim the VAT if that invoice has been paid so that last step isn't really needed as much if you are on cash accounting so those are all the kind of whistle stop tour of the checks I make if you are doing your own VAT return for the first time you're a little bit unsure if you've got it done correctly then you can arrange a hand holding one to one session with me my name's Alison Mead my business is Silicon Bullet you can find me on LinkedIn or you can find my uh, YouTube channel which might be where you're watching this um, or you can just go to blog.siliconbullet.com where I've got other links to videos and blog posts with hints and tips for doing your bookkeeping and you can just have a little look through and make sure you're doing it correctly but I fully recommend if you're doing your VAT return for the first time seek a little bit of help at the start of the VAT quarter just to make sure that you are entering things correctly and then especially with products like Zero or Sage Business Cloud once you enter something incorrectly the first time sorry once you enter something correctly the first time then the system will remember that and suggest it to you in the future or you can set up defaults suggestions in the background of your accounts package so that you don't have to remember what things are registered and what aren't you can make sure that you set the system up so that it will remind you as much as possible whereas if you start entering things wrong it's really tempting to the next time you, you see something on back reconciliation and it suggests the wrong thing because that's what you did last time you will keep doing things wrong so that's uh, Alison Mead at Silicon Bullet on my dog walk in Northamptonshire don't hesitate to get in touch if you've got any questions or need any hand holding and I can uh, remote in and help you out that's it for now, bye